All right, I have a really interesting tutorial video for you all today where we're going to be trying to build out a generative AI web application that allows a user to basically draw a picture. For example, if I wanted to draw a picture of, you know, a chicken, okay, let's just try our best to draw a chicken. This is what our chicken looks like. Let's give it a wing to give it some eyes. So you can draw a chicken and then over here you can say a happy chicken running in a field of sunflowers. And I'm going to go down here and I'm going to click submit a couple times. So Let's just do this like eight times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And behind the scenes, that is kicking off convex mutations and actions. And it's going to invoke the replicate API behind the scenes to basically take the image that I drew, take the prompt, and it's going to generate AIs for all of these different prompts. So as you can tell, we got some chickens coming back with a field of sunflowers. If uh, we want to change it up a little bit, let's try something else. Let's do... um. I don't know, a kid sliding down a water slide at a park. Okay, let's just clear this. Let's see if we can just get this going real quick. Um, I'll draw a little kid here. Woohoo! And we're going to go ahead and put some legs on him, some arms, some eyeballs. Let's see what happens here. I'll do like four of these. And hopefully this is uh, <laughs> going to be pretty good. Wow. Okay, that works pretty good. So what's happening behind the scenes is it's taking this React canvas, it's converting it to an image, and it's also taking the prompt, and we're taking both that image and the prompt, we're passing it to the Replicate API. That is going to generate the image for us, and then Convex, which is what we're using for our backend here, is automatically going to update our UI when our data models are updated behind the scenes. I think this is a really cool project in the tutorial, so if you are interested in seeing how I built this, be sure to stick around. And I do want to say before I start building out this application, this video is sponsored by Convex, which is a backend as a service. So basically, you they give you the tools necessary to quickly build out a backend, and they do a lot of really awesome stuff behind the scenes that make your UI kind of update live as your data models change. For example, you can build like really live chats or interactive collaborative application using Convex. Definitely really cool. I'm actually really impressed with using this. So that's what we're going to be using in this video. We're going to use convex.dev. So go check them out if you want to just find a new way to build out a backend without having to do all the manual database stuff yourself. And also we're going to be using Replicate to set up the control net models that we're going to be using to basically take a scribble and have it output an image of whatever the prompt is. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump into the code and try to uh, build this out together. All right, let's just go ahead and get started. So I always start my tutorials with a repo. So I'm going to go ahead and call this um, convex replicate. How about that? And we'll just make this MIT license, and we'll make this repo so we can start pushing our changes to a repo so that you all can actually see those changes. So now that we got our project here, I'm going to go ahead and just clone this. I'll click code, I'll click copy, and I have a VS Code terminal open. I'm going to go to my workspace and I will go ahead and clone that repo. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and just CD into that replicate and we can start developing on this project. So we're going to be using Next 13.4.5 or 6 and uh, we're going to be using the app router. So let's just do npm create next app at latest. At least I think that's the command for it. Okay, it's going to ask us what version. Yep, that's fine. 13.4.6. So if you are watching this video in the future, keep in mind the versions of the project. And I'm just going to go ahead and do the defaults for everything. Include Tailwind, Alp Router, aliases, all that should be good. All right, and then let's just go ahead and run this and make sure that if we go to localhost 3000, we can see our next application running. There we go. So we got the next project set up. Now let's actually read through the convex tutorial and try to set it up to work with our Next.js application. So if you go to Quick Start, there we have one for Next.js and they have a cool little toggle here where you can choose the pages directory or the app router. Since we are using the app router here, um, we can follow these steps. We already did this step. So now I'm going to go ahead and just do npm install convex. I can just go ahead and do that in another terminal down here. So now let's do an npx convex dev, and that should kind of walk us through a setup a terminal guide where I'm going to say create a new project. We're going to use the same name. So I've already run this once on my machine, but if it's your first time running this, I do believe it'll ask you to like verify a, a key, and then you have to go to the convex site and type that in and make sure it's good. And once you do, you'll see that your project shows up in your convex 
dashboard. So I did have to create a Convex account and be logged in before I did all that process. But we can actually click into our project now. And there's a nice UI that kind of gives you all the information you need about your Convex backend. So for example, when you create new functions, they'll show up here. Um, logs for all your API endpoints will show up here. And I'll walk you through some of this stuff as we're kind of adding new functionality and testing stuff out. Okay, so the next steps, let's just keep on going through this guide. It's really not, not too big. So they tell you how to like set up some example data and you can kind of import that data here by using some JSON-L format. But we're not going to be doing that part. I just want to kind of set up the convex provider and then we'll come back and reference this, this query stuff in a little bit. So let's go ahead and make an app context or convex client provider here. So source app and we're going to go ahead and make a convex client provider. We'll copy this code like so. Now this is already set up in my .env.local. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just do a exclamation mark so that TypeScript knows that it's defined. And then in our app layout, we could just copy this whole layout. I'll just go to my layout page here. I'm going to overwrite it. Okay. And basically what this is doing is pulling in that provider that we just created in this other file. And this is going to enable all of your children to have access to the convex hooks that we might need for when you need to do queries and mutations and stuff. Okay, and so this one's just kind of showing you how to display the data. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and rename some of these over here. I'll say this is convex, and this is going to be next. Okay, so you have two terminals running. Convex is your backend, right? It is for creating all your backend functionality and your API routes and your database. And it kind of needs to run on a separate terminal so that it can listen for when you're changing files in your convex folder and redeploy your functions to the remote um, service. And then next, of course, is just like the, the next app. So I'm going to go ahead and commit a lot of what we already done just so that we can kind of not have so many file changes. I'm going to say initial setup with next and convex. And I will add all these changes and I will commit them to a repo. So let's kind of play around with convex a little bit and try to understand like what, what is the purpose of it? Why, like why would we use this over using next API routes or anything like that? So the first thing you can do is in your convex folder, you can create new files and those files basically map to namespaces for your function. So if I were to make a new one, so for example, what we're generating in this app is AI images, right? So when a user fills out a sketch and then tries to generate an AI image from that sketch, we should probably track that information somehow. So I'm just going to go ahead and say like, I'll just go ahead and say like sketches and then I will put TS after that. So now you'll notice that convex is actually checking that we just added a folder. And now when you start adding and changing this file, it's you'll see in the dashboard, it'll start adding functions here that you can actually hit. Like these are live functions that are updated as you save files and you can invoke them from your UI. All right, so let's try to make our first function. So like, let's, let's pretend that we want to allow someone to save a sketch. So I'm going to go ahead and say export const save sketch equals and then I'm going to go ahead and say mutation. All right, so the first time you're writing your first function in convex, the mutation method might not show up for you. So you might have to manually import it. You can just say import mutation from dot slash generated slash server. And that'll have access to that function now. And this, this is kind of similar to TRPC where you have like queries and mutations. Mutations are for when you need to modify something on your backend, like you need to write data to a database. And it queries for when you want to fetch data from your database, like, you know, fetch a list of to-do items and show those in your UI. So in our case, we're going to go ahead and create um, a mutation. And this thing takes in a callback like this. And inside the callback, the first parameter. So this gives you access to a database right out of the box. And you can actually start writing stuff and storing stuff inside the database. Now, the second argument is things that are going to be passed in from the front end. So in our case, what would the front end user want to save? maybe the prompt or something like that. So we're just going to go ahead and put a prompt here like this. And we're just going to go ahead and put a console log right here. Just make sure this is working. Okay, Cause we kind of typed a lot of code. It might not make a lot of sense until you actually see it being connected to in the front end. But notice that I save this file. And if we go back to our convex UI, our function is actually right there. Okay. So we can actually click on the function and we can actually invoke it manually here. So I can just say run function and see what happens. And we can pass in a prompt if we wanted to. I could say like hello and click run mutation. 
And that's actually gonna invoke the mutation, do the logic and return you whatever response. You can go look at the logs here. So like I mentioned, every time you save the file, Convex is gonna recompile and redeploy your code. And that is actually accessible on a live environment, right? So it's deployed somewhere. In this case, this is our dev environment, but you can switch it to production at some point. So how do we actually hit this endpoint from the front end, right? It's like, cool, we have a, a function that's deployed somewhere, but how do we actually like call it from the UI and do something? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna minimize some of this stuff and we're gonna go to our page here. Let's clear out most of this stuff in the page. And we're gonna try to just do some logic where if you click on a button or fill out a form, it'll send a request to that backend endpoint. So I personally like to use React hook forms. So I'm gonna import that so we can actually start generate a form to send some data over to that backend. So I'm gonna go to React hook forms and then going to the getting started guide, I'll copy this. Just go ahead and install this. This is a library I kind of use for all my form requests. It just makes dealing with forms a little bit easier if you're on the front end or using like a client component. Technically you could do like a server action, but again, I'm not doing, um, I'm not gonna teach you guys about alpha things in my videos. So let's just go ahead and grab this example form here. And we're gonna just paste it in here. And then we're also going to copy some of this logic, put it up here, and then we're gonna grab this import and put it up there. Okay, so what React hook form does is basically it gives you a bunch of helper functions you can call on your form so that when you're filling in information, you can do like validation on it. And when you submit, you can have it auto validate and show errors if there's any errors. In our case, we're gonna get rid of some of these comments here and we just want to use a prompt. So I'm gonna go ahead and register um, on this input. We have an input here that technically we don't need a default value, so I'm gonna delete that. But we're gonna register the name of prompt onto this input and we're gonna make that thing required. So I'm gonna go ahead and also put required here as this parameter. I'm gonna delete the second input because we don't really need two. And then here, I'm gonna go ahead and say prompt. And this is going to basically show this as an error if you forget to fill in the prompt. And then we finally, we have a, an input button that submits the form here. And then technically we can get the form data and we could just have a callback happening right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just move some of this logic here. So we have like TypeScript baked in for us already. Okay, does that make sense? All we're doing is creating a form and listening for some inputs and getting that information. Notice also we can type the form here. So if I were to go ahead and just say like um, prompt is a string like that, adding types to the form actually gives you the types when you submit. So let's just try this out. So when we submit this form, we should see a console log printout in our front end and it should print out whatever we have on the form itself. So in our case, let's refresh the page. Um, I forgot to add use client here. So on the page itself, we are just gonna say use client. Technically you could like do some, you know, server side rendering here or do like React server components. I'm just gonna make it a client page just because it's easier for right now. And now we have the form showing up here. All right, so notice that when we type, like the text is, is white, right? So we probably wanna add some styling to this. I'll say class name text black so that the input actually has some black text in it. So now I can type in here. Now, the thing I was trying to show you is we want to verify does the form work. So I'm gonna go ahead and just say like, hello world, click submit. And notice that we get that prompt information down here. I'm also gonna verify that the, the required field works and it looks like it does. If I try to submit without filling this in, the validation will show up. We're gonna clean this up and make it look pretty in just a little bit, but I wanna kind of make sure that we can connect to the convex uh, mutation that we just created and verify this all works. So when someone submits the form, how do we call that function that we just created? Because remember we have in convex, we have this function that we can actually invoke, but how do we invoke it from the front end? It's actually super easy. And if you've watched any of my other videos with like TRPC, it's a very similar approach where you just have to import a use mutation hook. So I'm gonna go ahead and say const um, save sketch. Mutation is equal to use mutation. And I'll just go ahead and auto import that from that generated folder. And inside of this, you can actually do a string and I can actually see that it auto completes for that mutation that we just created, okay? So now if you wanted to send that data over to the backend, over to Convex and have it process that form data, you can just invoke it like this and I'll just pass in some form data. 
So let's let's verify this works. I'm going to go to my app. I'm going to go ahead and type in some information. I'll click submit. And notice that down here there is a blue log. So Convex is actually going to log out as you make requests. And this is the logs that are happening on your API endpoint. So, so if we go back to our Convex dashboard and go to logs, you'll see down here that it prints out the form that we inputted. So we are actually sending data over to the backend and it's being processed. And we're going to use this in the, the future all replicate to generate some AI images using this prompt and also using like a sketch pad. Just to make sure that this all makes sense, if we go back to this function here, let's say you wanted to do something else. Like let's say you wanted to return a message that says success back to the UI once this, this stuff finishes processing. And I'll do some stuff. We can do it like this. So now if we were to save this file again, Convex is going to check that you just saved. It's going to redeploy those changes. Now, if I go back to my page, let's just go ahead right here. I'm going to convert this to an async function. And I'm going to put a const results is equal to await this. And I'm going to go ahead and just console log the results here, just to show that we are going to get some data back after we call this mutation. So it's no different from doing like a post request to your API endpoints, right? So just go ahead and clear that. I'll say hello world, click submit. And notice that we get back a message that says, success. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to actually try to store something in the database, right? Right now we're just console logging stuff, which isn't, you know, that useful, but we can use convex to store data into the database. So I can say db.insert, and then you can actually insert, like just insert it into whatever table you want. So in our case, we'll say sketches, and we're going to go ahead and insert a value. So in our case, we will insert the prompt here. We'll just say the insert the prompt. Make sure we do an await on this. And I'm going to go ahead and put an async here so we can await on it. So some things to point out is that when you do mutations, they're ACID compliant. So everything that you do, like if you were to write to different tables and do multiple things, all of them have to work or it's going to basically roll back on all the mutations that you did, which is pretty useful because often you need transactions when you're like dealing with databases. And this is just a nice feature that it does for you out of the box. Second thing I want to point out is that we haven't even generated a schema at all, right? This is just a document store and it's using the sketches name for our table and it's going to store whatever data that we want. So now if I were to go back to our UI and type in hello world and click submit, that is going to run our convex um, function and then it'll create a table for us. So notice that there's a sketches table that got created and our data is automatically added here, which is pretty cool. So we've gone full circle. We have the UI showing a form. We input something, we submit it. That invokes a convex function, which is going to store the data inside a table that's auto created for us. And then as you like were to add more things to the data that comes in, it's just going to expand this table and add more things. So for example, if I want to say like created at and say date.now or something, next time I do a request to the endpoint, you should see another column called created at, although there already is a creation time, so I don't really need to do that, but let's just show you an example. So now it's there, we got a created at and we have an ID here. All right, so the next thing is we have the ability to store data in the database. Now, how do we actually get this data back so we can like display it? on a page, right? So after you've generated a bunch of AI images, maybe you want to keep track of a collection of these sketches so you can go back in time and view images that you've created. So let's try to do that. I'm going to go ahead and make a new page here. I'll call it collection. And I'm going to make a page.tsx in this directory. And we're going to go ahead and try to copy some of the approaches that we took for another, our, our main page here. I was going to paste this in. And really, we don't need a form here, so I can kind of delete a majority of all this code. We don't need a form um, for that. So the difference is now we need to do a query. We need to fetch data from an endpoint that's going to fetch from the database and send that back to us, right? So we need to first go and create a endpoint. So if we go to convex and go to our sketches file, we can make like a new query endpoint or function, I guess you can say. So I'm going to say get sketches equals query. Make sure you import that. And then I'm going to go ahead and kind of copy some of the same logic because it's the same signature in a sense, but we don't need to pass in any type of parameters in that case. 
So we have access to, let me make this a const instead. So instead of doing the insert, we're gonna say db query, and we're gonna put the name of the table, which is sketches. And then we can also say dot, and we can start doing a bunch of other methods here, right? So in our case, we wanna just grab everything, and a query is just gonna grab everything by default, I believe. So what we could do is just say collect, and I think that'll give us back all the data. So I'm just gonna go say const sketches is equal to this, and then I'm gonna return sketches. Does that make sense? So basically getting all the data from the sketches table, returning it back from our API endpoint. And now since we have a query here, and since we also saved the file, remember go back to convex and you'll see that we have sketches. We have the ability to get the sketches and save the sketches. Let's just go here and run this function real quick. You see here there's a run function button. Let's just go ahead and click this. And we are gonna go ahead and just try to run this function with no parameters and see what happens. And actually it gave us back the results here. So we got back the information that's in our database. And uh, that should be good. So we know the endpoint works and we tested it on this console. Let's actually hook it up to our UI. So let's go back to our page here. And instead of saying use mutation, we're gonna say use query. And again, we could just go ahead and make sure we get that IntelliSense working. Let's just go ahead and, I think that's the wrong input, import. Let's just go ahead and auto import that from here. And there we go. Our query is auto completed there and it shows up. So similar to the TRPC, this does the query and this is gonna give us back all the sketches that are in our backend. So we can just go ahead and loop over them and we can just go ahead and do a map on this. And I do believe this could potentially be null. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do question mark dot and then I'm gonna say sketch. And then I want to render out a bunch of different sketches. So in our case, we'll say sketch.prompt. And uh, I think we also have an ID that we can use. So I'll say key is equal to sketch. Uh, I don't know what it is. I think it's underscore ID. Okay, so now let's try to go to our new page we made. Let's go to collections here. And if this works, we should see our information get displayed. Cool. All right, so there you have it. We have two functions, one's for saving a sketch, one's for getting back all the sketches in our database. And I want to point out something else that's really cool about Convex is everything, when you update um, data in the table, everything is live, right? So if I were to kind of open up a new window here, I'm going to pull this up to another monitor. You guys can't see it, but I'm going to go to the main page on that form and I'll just type in like, hello again on this other monitor. I'll click submit and notice that hello again pops up automatically. This is pretty cool because what Convex is doing, if you actually go to the network tab and go to WebSockets, there is a sync WebSocket that gets connected and it's listening for events when you change your data in your database. So you can have multiple people kind of changing the same records at the same time and you can do a live collaboration type of web application where stuff will just get updated as these messages are coming in. So right now, if I were to clear this out and go back and submit another thing from the other monitor, Notice that the WebSocket event comes in and it says that, hey, like something changed. Let me go ahead and pull this up so you can see it. It says, hey, there's a modification here to the query that you're kind of using behind the scenes and it kind of passes you all the new data that needs to be displayed. So it's pretty cool. You can make really live interactive websites. You can make like games with very little extra effort on your part because everything, every time you do a query, it just automatically updates with the light, latest, greatest data. But with what we're building, um, we might not see that too much, but we can probably try to utilize that in an example. All right, before we get too much further, I'm gonna go ahead and just commit this and I'll say ability to write in fetch sketches. Okay, go ahead and push that up. So going back to the homepage, what is it that we're trying to build here? We're trying to build the ability for someone to type in a prompt and then they want to be able to draw some type of sketch and when they submit that prompt and sketch together to the back end the back end is going to use replicate it's going to run it through stable diffusion or some type of machine learning model to generate a image for us that uses both the image and the prompt so the first thing i want to do is i'm going to bring in this library called react sketch canvas um, it seems like it's pretty cool it's mit licensed but basically if you just install this you can get a nice canvas where you can draw around on stuff. It also has a bunch of additional functions you can use to clear the canvas and like export the canvas as an image. And that's the key part. We wanna be able to export the canvas to an image so we can pass it to replicate to have it use that. 
Okay, so let's just go ahead up here. I'm gonna go ahead and install that. And when that's done, okay, let's kind of follow this a little bit. So if you just go ahead and bring this in here, React Sketch Canvas, and we're gonna put that probably, we could just keep it inside the form, I guess. We wanna keep it, uh, I'll put it above the submit button. Okay, let's just go ahead and auto import that. You don't need styles. Actually for styles, um, I'm actually gonna put width of 256 in height. 256 here, and we're not going to put it on there. And the stroke color will be um, black because I do believe the AI needs like black and white backgrounds for it to work properly. So let's go back to our app, which is this one. So now we can actually draw, which is pretty cool, right? Very little work. I didn't do anything other than inst install a third party package, but we can draw. And also, there's ability to export our drawing into a base64 encoded image, which we're going to use in a bit. Okay, um, I probably want to style this up again. Let's just put a little bit of space between all these things. So on the form itself, I'm going to give it a class name of flex, flex column, and a gap of two, just so that some of the stuff is like spaced out, because right now it's kind of, there's not much space between these. And then down here, our button where it says submit, let's just go ahead and give this a class name, I don't know, a background of blue 400, rounded, and that's good enough for like a really basic button. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is like, how do we export what we draw? So if I were to refresh the page and just like do a smiley face here, I want to be able to export that to a base64 image. How do I do that? Well, if you look at the library here and scroll down, they tell you you can pass a ref like this. And then when you have that ref, you can actually invoke methods on it. I think down here they tell you what those methods are. Like you can reset the canvas, you can clear the canvas, you can export the image. That's the thing that we want to do. So we're going to go ahead up here and we're going to make a ref here. I'll say const canvas ref is equal to use ref, pass it null. And I do believe we can pass this a, um, a type of data structure. I think it's called like react sketch canvas ref, I believe. Could be wrong. Yeah, that worked. Okay, so make sure you import use ref and you import this type. So now when the form submitted, what we're going to do is we're going to say, get the ref, get the current value, and I want to get the image. So I'm going to say export image, and we're going to go ahead and just do a JPEG. And this is potentially undefined. So I think what I'm also going to do is say, if there is no ref set, I'm just going to return. Like don't allow people to submit this form if there's no image set up. So we can basically call this, I do believe this is a promise. If you hover over it, it says promise here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just say, const image is equal to await this. And we're gonna console log this out. The console log image, image, okay? We don't need to invoke the backend just yet, but let's just go ahead and um, check this out. So going back to the UI, I don't think we want that anymore. Let's go here. I'm going to type in a prompt that says like, hello world. And I'm going to do a smiley face here and click submit. But let's go ahead and get the console loaded up so we can see, do we get that a 64 image? And it is not printing anything. So I'm kind of wondering what do we do wrong? Let's just go ahead and console log here. Are we getting here at all? We are. Oh, okay. I know what the issue is. I didn't put, I didn't pass the ref here. So I need to pass in the canvas ref so that it can actually bind to the right react reference. I think we should be good. So let's click submit. And now notice here, we get this base 64 image. And if you command click it, we have a JPEG. This is the image we're going to send to the AI so that it can use this as a reference point for the control net in generating your image okay so let's go ahead and um, change up what we're doing on the back end so they can ac actually accept an image and maybe even use the image to generate uh, an output okay so I'm gonna add that back in and we're gonna pass in form data like this so we'll pass in the prompt but then we also want to pass in the base 64 image that we just generated Okay, so obviously we're getting errors because we haven't set up the back end to accept that. So let's go and open sketches here. And we're going to go ahead and import image as well. And I'll say that is also a string. 
And technically, if you wanted to store the image, you can do that. You could store it in the database. Um, Convex has a file storage as well. So we could potentially store these images in their file storage, which I think I'm going to try doing later on. But let's just kind of keep pushing forward and get the AI working. Because we have the prompt, we have the image, and we're sending it to the back end. Now we can kind of use Replicate to generate these images for us. So let's move on to um, how do you get Replicate going. So if you go over here, I have a account set up for replicate.com and I'm using this control net scribble model. They have like a bunch of different models you can kind of search through, but this one is the one I'm kind of wanting to use, right? So you can draw an image of a turtle and then this is the output that you'll get when you, you know, do that. And of course you can like add in the prompts and stuff to make it more interesting. But let's just go ahead and go to the API. In order for this to work, you do have to install Replicate. So let's just go back to our app here. I'm going to go ahead and install Replicate. So they do give you a Replicate access token that you have to basically put into Convex. I'm going to go to Convex and then down here in Settings, you can go to your Project Settings. They have a section for Environment Variables. So I went ahead and added it in. I didn't want to share that token with you all, but it's pretty simple. You put the key and the value here and you're done. But the way Convex is set up, you're not supposed to do API requests from a, from a mutation. You're instead supposed to be doing that from an action. So what we could potentially do is after we insert the sketch here, we could actually schedule an action to run, which is going to do the AI generation on replicate. And then when the AI generation on replicate is done, that could kind of update a database entry. And then our UI will just kind of refresh. So I'm going to go ahead and make another function here. I'll say export const generate, and then I'm going to say internal action. And we're going to go ahead and just pass in, uh, we'll keep this empty for right now. Okay. And I'll put it like a to do. Implement me. And the thing that we need to pass to the action would be like a prompt, obviously. I'll just go say prompt and string. But then we also probably need to pass in the image as well. I'll just go ahead and say image. And that could be image. But again, if mutations are supposed to be deterministic. So if you're like invoking third party libraries from a mutation, that's not proper and it won't work the way you think it should with convex. So how do you actually invoke this action? Well, you can actually pull in something called a scheduler. So I'll say scheduler. I'll say scheduler dot run after. And we can just go ahead and set this to zero because we want this to immediately start executing something. But we can give this the name of the function we want to invoke, right? So the action we want to invoke is called generate. And then we're going to pass in prompt and then also image. Now, I do think we want to await on that maybe. I'm not sure. And we probably should also pass in the sketch ID. So like if we were to go ahead and say like sketch ID is equal to this. Um, I shall say sketch. We can go ahead and pass in the sketch uh, ID. Okay, yeah, we have an ID here. So I'll just say sketch ID is equal to sketch.id. Just so that we know like what table in the database we need to update when this thing is done. Because this could take up to 5 to 10 seconds depending on how low replicate is going to be. And I think this is a data type of string potentially. All right, so now for the AI part, actually let's, okay, so let's make sure this actually works. If I just print out a console log like hello world, uh, GG, make sure this thing works. And I'm also going to print out all of this information that came over just to make sure that that stuff is indeed getting set. All right, let's try this out. So when we invoke this mutation, it should at some point call the action. The action should get this information and then it should be able to call replicate. Go back here to our little smiley face, click submit. And notice that we do get the logs of the sketch ID, the prompt, and the image. So we do know that the action is getting invoked. And I don't know if I said this, I'll, I'll say it again. The purpose of the internal action is that it's private. The only thing that can call this is like other backend functions. So it, it is an extra level of protection. You still want to make sure you have some type of authentication checks on your public methods. But just know that this cannot be called from your front end now. How do we generate an image? What we want to do is we want to go back to replicate, which I think we had here. And we're going to go ahead and copy this stuff. 
So I'm going to go ahead and paste all this in here. And we also want to paste this in here. Okay, we can put an async in front of this so we can do a weight on it. Okay, so what this is doing is creating a replicate object with our token that we set in the environment of convex. And now we're using this model. Notice this long like string. That's the model ID. And we need to pass in the image here. So what we could potentially do is just pass in the image that we that got sent in. And there's some other things we need to pass in, like the scale. We could set that as like a seven. The prompt needs to be passed in. The image resolution, I'm gonna say two or five twelve. And then for the end prompt, so like the negative prompt, it's always good to have negative prompts when you're dealing with AI to make sure that like you don't have low quality images. So I'm gonna put this in here, basically telling AI like make sure you have good looking hands and anatomy. Sometimes AI will give like people five extra arms and stuff like that. So kind of what we're gonna do here. And when we get the results back, this is actually going to be an array. And the first index of the array, or index 0, is going to be our original input image. And index 1 is going to be the output. So what we could do is when this is all done, we can invoke another mutation. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to say run mutation. Because we're going to do a database update. And what we want to do is we're going to have to go down here and like update an existing thing. So I'm going to say const, I'm going to say export const update sketch. Actually, I'm going to say, I'm going to go here and say export const update sketch result equals, and then I will say internal mutation. Again, like no one else should be able to call this. This should only be called from this internal action. And we're going to go ahead and give this a DB like that. And we also probably want to pass in a sketch ID and then probably the image itself. So here we could probably just give like the result. Okay, so here we could say await db dot insert or say db dot match. And we're going to give the sketch ID. And then we also want to pass in the uh, We'll just say the result. Okay, let's just put an async here so this all works. And we should probably type this so it actually knows that these are going to be strings and result will also be a string. I, actually, I guess it doesn't like this. It needs to be ID string. Okay, so now what we could do is up here, we're going to say run mutation. And we're going to pass in update sketch result. And we're going to pass in sketch ID and then result of one. Output. Oh, this actually needs to be output of one, and this will be result. It doesn't like that this is a string, so I'll, again, I'll do ID of string. And this one... And also TypeScript is not happy about this, so I'll just say as string string. These are both URLs to the images. The result will be like a, a URL. All right, let's see if this actually works. I'm going to go ahead and just clear out my, my database a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and just like delete. I'm going to clear the table. And then I should be able to go here, click Submit. And we should see some information come up. So we have this prompt come up. The functions are being invoked. All right, so we're getting an error that says set timeout is not defined. So we actually need to allow this function, the generate function, to run with a node runtime. Um, most of the mutations and queries actually run on a faster runtime that doesn't have node support. You can go read through the docs for more fine-grained detail of like what, what I mean by that. But if you want to be able to do things like set timeouts and other node-related library function calls, you actually need to put a use node at the top of your file. So I'm going to go ahead and just put a generate here. And I'm going to cut this code out and put it inside of this file. And we're going to go ahead and take a lot of this code out and put it at the other, put it at the top over here. And at the very top of this generate file, I'm going to say use node. 
Okay, so I can save this. And now this generate function will have access to the node library and it won't crash next time. Now the main difference is now that we change that to another file, we have to change this to generate colon generate so that it calls the right namespace. Go ahead and save that. All right, let's try this one more time. Go ahead and click Submit. And we should see, okay, some stuff is happening. Let's go to our data and let's verify if, uh, I'm gonna add some console logs real quick just to make sure this is actually getting invoked. And then this one over here, I'm gonna go ahead and just say like running replicate. I wanna make sure that these things are getting called. So I am getting an error down here. I think it's something to do with this patch method I'm calling. I think I actually need to pass in, I need to convert the string of the ID into an actual like ID class so that I can actually like process it correctly. All right, let's try this one more time. Go ahead and click submit. Okay, so run generate is getting called. Running replicate is getting called. Hopefully this works and there's no errors. If this does work, we should see the data get updated with a URL to the generated image. So let's go back over here. All right, we're not seeing that here. Let's just go ahead and print out what this is. I'll just say ID and print out the ID. You know, I think I forgot to await on this too. Maybe that's part of the issue. Okay, that was the issue. I wasn't awaiting on a promise. And now I think if I go to data, I should see some results here. So let's just go ahead and see if we can like open this up and see, there it is. That's what my smiley face generated for us for some reason. Um, so let's see if we can kind of get this thing displayed in the UI. So after you submit it, we should probably have convex return like the ID for the entry. So over here, we're getting the results back. Save sketch mutation is getting called up here. Save sketch, it returns. Okay, right now it's returning message success, but we actually want to have it just return Probably the sketch. Let's do that. We'll have that return the sketch, which means we'll have access to the ID. Which means I think what we can do up here is we can actually like use a query to get live updates when the sketch is updated. So we're going to go back to convex and we're going to make another endpoint. We'll say const get sketch. And that's going to be a query. Fix in the DB. And we're just going to basically return an await db.query. Uh, and we do want to pass in like a sketch ID here. All right, so now for our get sketch, we're going to say return db.get. And I believe we could just pass in the sketch ID here, right? I think I might need to actually say new ID is equal to sketches, sketch ID like that. And I think that'll just grab the one individual record and send it back to us. So let's go back to our UI and see if we can get like the sketch query going. So I'll say use query. We'll say sketches get sketch. And I believe this might need a sketch ID, which we're going to have to dynamically change this. So I think we're going to need some state here. So I'll say like const sketch ID set sketch ID equals use state. And we're going to go ahead and just set this as a, an empty string for right now. All right, let's just try updating this. So after we get the results back, I'm just going to go ahead and say results.id. And that'll store the sketch ID, and hopefully that'll kick off the query and get some data back for us. And if, if I understand this correctly, we should be able to display the image somewhere. So I'm going to go ahead and say image source is equal to that dot result like that. And then I only want to display this if this is like set. I'll just do this. 
Okay, this is throwing an error. I think it's because our backend like needs to just not throw an error if ID is not turned in. If ID is not sent in, so I'm gonna go ahead and just say if there is no sketch ID, I'm just gonna return null. All right, let's just try this again. I'll do a smiling face. I'll click this, I'll click submit, and let's see what happens. Wow, creepy. But it kind of works. Let's just style this up a little bit um, so that we can have the form and the input. Let's have the results like outside of the form, like this. And I'm going to go ahead and just say this will be a div. Last name is grid, grid calls two, gap of four. We're going to wrap this whole thing. There we go. Now the image is kind of big. I might make the image a little bit smaller. So I'll say like width is 256. Height 256. All right, let's just do a refresh and see what happens. So let's try a bird flying in the sky. And then I want the bird to be right here. And we'll do like a mountain. This, maybe we'll do a beach. This would be like a beach with a palm tree here on the beach. Let's see what happens if you do this. Cool. Looks very futuristic. Um, I'm going to say illustrated cartoonish. And we'll try it again. Maybe we'll put like a sun over here in the back. Maybe a little ship. Little sailboat. Let's see what happens if you do this. Beautiful. We got our little banana sailboat there with an umbrella. <laughs> we got looks like a shell, and we have the uh, the palm tree over here. Oh, I don't have a way to clear the canvas. Let's just restart, refresh the page. Let's do one more. I'll say a panda eating bamboo. Okay, and then we'll have like some bamboo shoots over here. Okay, and we'll have like a and uh, there he's just sitting right there. <laughs> Trying to grab, make his arms. There's his ears. This, it, this, this is a bad picture. There's some eyes right there, and he's eating bamboo. Okay, let's see what happens if we do that one. So, I mean, it, it tried. I mean, it got this stick in the right location and uh, it mistaked its head for looks like some wheat and we got some bamboo over here. So, pretty cool. And I guess the main thing I want to emphasize is it kind of, you have to kind of wrap your head around how Convex is going to automatically update your queries. So, like, you don't have to have a long polling or any type of like interval to kind of keep on checking, like, hey, is this stuff done? You just kind of have to, in your back end, modify a row and then your front end is already doing a query on that row by an ID and it'll get that data and it'll update it which is why this image will show after some amount of time because on the back end we told convex to update a database row and put the result in that row and that causes it to basically show the image the moment it's ready so there is a little bit more I want to do on the application in terms of functionality but before we start doing that, I do want to bring in a component library to help style this app a little bit, because right now it's just looking pretty basic. So I'm going to be using something called shadcn.com. Um, it's kind of like a, it's not really a component library. It just has like a collection of components you can install. But we're going to go ahead and just follow the docs here and get this set up. So we already have a next app created. I'm going to go ahead and run this. Go ahead and do this. And we're going to go ahead and go to our project here. Let's just go ahead and run this. I do believe this is going to like kind of modify your Tailwind CSS file to include some of the defaults that this library likes to use. I'll just say yes. You can go ahead and overwrite those defaults. And then what this allows you to do is they have a bunch of components over here and you can just kind of 
add them as you decide that you need them. So for example, if you want a card, you can go over here and you can run one command, and then you have a component that's kind of copied into your components directory, which allows you to have full control and flexibility over that card component because it's in your code base. So you can kind of modify it and style it the way that you want to do it. They also have a lot of like code examples here, how like you could build this, like a card, you go to code and it kind of shows you. Um, and then also if you go to examples, all of this is in code. So you can kind of see like how they did all this stuff here. So let's start with like making like a little nav bar. So I'm gonna go ahead and view, view the code over here and try to figure out how is the nav bar created. And I think it's the simplest just adding like a border bottom here. So I'm gonna grab this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our components. Let's go to app. I'm just gonna add one called nav bar. CSX. This will be a simple component that we just say export function navbar. And we're going to return that code. And inside the navbar, we could add maybe a next link so that users can go to their collection. So let's just go ahead and add a next link. And we're going to say href is equal to collection. Like that. Make sure I end that off. I'm going to go ahead and say collection here. And this is a client component. So let's make sure we say use client. And let's also figure out why this is complaining. There's no closing tag. Oh, I put the slash at the wrong location. All right, so now we have a nav bar and we have the shad CN UI set up. So we can go to our layout here and let's just go right above the children and we're going to put our nav bar. Go ahead and say nav bar like this. We're going to auto import this. Okay, so now if we go back to our app, um, we didn't give it any height, so I think we do need to like at least put something in it. Um, actually, let me do a hard refresh and make sure this is working. So I do see collections popping up over here. And I think by default this is in light mode, so I'm just going to hard code this to be dark mode for right now. But there is a, a library you can bring in to make this easier to switch like a dark light mode toggle, but we're not going to be doing that. Uh, in this video, let's see what is going on here. Let's go to Tailwind. Oh, I think because I have my components nested in the app directory, we do need to put a prefix of source inside of this so it knows how to find all these things. And there we have it. We have the Shad CN UI working pretty good. We got a link here that takes us to collection. Yeah. So let's work a little bit more on the nav bar. The inside of here, I'm going to add a container. I'm going to say MX auto. So that should kind of like center this stuff before it was like at the very far edge and it wasn't that great. And then we could probably give this some, some height or some padding just so there's like some extra space in the nav bar. Okay. And let's just go ahead and center this. I'll just say text center right now. And that's good enough. So if, if we decided that we want to make this an actual like product, we might want to actually add a logo like over here we could have like a div that says logo and then over here we have some links and then over here we have like a sign in button or something okay now if you wanted to do that what you could do is you can actually give this a flex and i can say justify i think it's justify between okay so that'll push all those items um aside let me just hide my head so you can see that real quick Okay, so we got a sign in button that we're not going to use at all, but it's there. So that at least makes the app look a little bit nicer. We could kind of style this form a little bit. I do believe the component library has some built in components for like inputs and forms. Let's go and check out input down here. And let's see how this works. So basically, you just need to add in this input. So I'm going to copy this command. I'm going to go back to our terminal. I'm going to type that in. Press tab, and I'm going to actually prefix this with source slash because that is where our because that is where our code is actually set up. Okay, so now that we've done that, we have if you look over here, this is the first time we've added a component from the Shad CN UI. So there's an input here. If you look at it, you have all the code that's needed for a styled input. The pops props are already set up. They're being passed in. The children are set up. They're being passed in. Stuff like that. 
So if you wanted to use this in an existing page, let's go to our main page. And we're going to go down a little bit to where we have the input here. Here it is. I'm going to change this to a capital I input and make sure I import this from the component that we just set up. And for the class name, it's already styled, so we don't need to like pass a class, but you do have the ability to override styles if needed. Now we got an input here. Okay. Um, we could probably put a label on this. So let's, again, let's go back to here. It looks like they have a label. Okay. And let's go ahead and copy the label as well. All right, so now we should have the ability to bring in a label. Let's kind of look at the example here. They just kind of paste in the label like this. Auto import that from the components library. And I'm going to go ahead and just say prompt. Okay, and this will be for prompt. All right, so if this works correctly, we should be able to click on the prompt. And it was supposed to be able to highlight this. So it's not highlighting this when you click on the label. So I think we do need to add an ID here and just give it prompt so that it'll highlight and select this. I guess I should say it should focus the input when you click this. Cool. Now maybe we should add a label to the canvas as well just so it's more apparent what this white thing is that's like has nothing. So I'll just say like canvas, draw something below. So people know like what, what is this, right? Okay, that looks pretty good. Now maybe we could add a little bit of margin top to the label. A so class name, margin top four or two, just to kind of space that out a little bit. It might be cool to revert the colors so that the background is white and the, the actual color of the drawing is black. I don't know if that's even possible, to be honest. Let's see if there is a background color because if there's not, um, yeah, I don't think there is. So, you know, we won't, we don't need to worry about that too much. So the button here, the button doesn't really match the theme. So let's go back to here and let's see if there's a button, which there should be. So let's just go here. We got a button. Let's just add it in. Over here and put source. There we go. All right, and then let's find that submit, submit button. Let's just import the button like that. We're gonna go ahead and say submit. Save that and get rid of the class name on this. Here we go. So now we should have a button on our app that says submit. So it looks a little bit better, right? I mean, it's better than before. It's not, not too awesome, but it works. Now we can at least go to our collections and also we should probably have another link here that says like generate. Um, so let's go back to the nav bar. I'll add another link here. Now again, this is a space between, so we do need to kind of group the links to here. Um, I think we can call this nav and we can have two links here. So this one could be home or let's call it generate. And then we should probably space out this a little bit. So I'll say flex gap four. I'll put some space between these links. Um, now, I don't think these things are links for some reason. I don't know. We could probably style them to make them look like links, but for right now, it's probably good enough. Okay, so we can kind of switch between our app. Awesome. The one thing I wanted to do is like the power of convex again is like everything is super reactive and we have that web socket that's getting live events. So to demonstrate that a little bit more, what we could do is let the user be able to generate multiple prompts at the same time and have those kind of load in as they finish. So let's do a little bit of refactoring on the actual page. So I'll just go to app page. And what we're going to do is when we submit this form, right now we're like setting a sketch ID. But what we could do is we could potentially have this be an array of sketch IDs. And we could just kind of push those into an array and then display that array down below. And you'll see them kind of pop up when they're finished. And we could also add in a loader state as well. So let's change this to an array real quick. I'll change this to sketch IDs. And let's actually do a query on get sketches here, okay? So that'll just get all the sketches. Um, actually, what do we call this? It was get, yeah, sketches. And this should be the, all the sketches that are in the system. We could probably change this to like make it only return a subset or we could have it so like there's a batch number so that it only returns the ones that we're creating. 
But let's just go ahead and try to change this up a little bit. So if we already did the query for the sketches here, we just have to render them out. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that code for like keeping track of a sketch ID. You don't care about the results here. And what we're going to do is we're going to say sketches query. And that is going to be an array if it's defined. So I'll do a map and we'll say sketch. And for every sketch that we have, we're going to render out an image. Okay, so this is complaining because it's expecting it to be like an image prop, but it's it's fine. So now we have every image that we've ever generated in the system down below. And what we could potentially do is change this UI up a little bit. So I'm gonna put a, a label here or a title that says recent sketches. So I'll just say like H2 recent sketches. Oh, it's putting it over here for some reason. Um, and we're going to move all this. We're going to move this down below the form. Okay, we'll put it here. We'll save this. The grid gap stuff, I think, could potentially just go away for right now. Um, little div could probably go away because it's already in a form. And let's wrap this in a, a div. That's a grid, grid, columns, four, gap, four. But every image is basically in a, a, a grid system down here. And as we generate images, we can see them kind of pop up over here. So um, I don't like how there's so much space here. So let's go above the prompt and let's just go ahead and say min h screen padding. We don't want padding on this. Let's get rid of the padding. Maybe padding top of four would be good enough. Does that seem okay? Now that I think about it, maybe it'd be better if it is on the left and we have all these on the right. So I'm changing my mind a little bit, which is fine. Um, we just need to put this whole thing on the right and this whole thing on the left. Okay, so to achieve that, we could give this a grid. We could say grid columns of two. Again, gap of four. We're going to wrap this in a div. And then this whole thing will be a section like so. Right. And then this thing should probably be in a container as well. So let's go back and let's put this whole thing in a container and MX auto it just so it brings it in a little bit. That looks better. And then also this. So now that I'm looking at this, like this form has a lot of extra space. Like we don't need all this space. It really just needs like to be one fourth of the page. So instead of doing grids, one approach is you can actually say flex and then on the actual form itself, we could give this a width of one fourth. Okay. And that'll kind of push it to the side. And then the, the grid over here will be the remainder of the page. Okay. So this looks a little bit better. Maybe you guys can tell me, but let's just go ahead and see what happens if we were to just clear out the database. All right. So we have all our sketches here. I'm just going to clear them out and we're going to start fresh. Okay, so we have no sketches here. I'm gonna go ahead and say a running chicken. And let's see if we can draw a little chicken with a beak, uh, maybe a body here. Some little legs. Cool, let's see, click submit. And what I wanted to show you is if this thing is actually working correctly, Okay, so we can actually submit multiples of these. And this is what I'm going to show you is behind the scenes, since we use a convex action and we did a scheduler, these things are going to be updated live as the data comes in, right? We didn't have to add any extra logic in our front end to like worry about that, which is really cool. Um, we might want to sort these by the creation date descending because right now it's just going to keep on appending them to the end. So maybe we can kind of do that. So for the sketches query, we can probably go over here and make a derive. So I can say that const sorted sketches is equal to the uh, sketches query. Um, we're going to default it to an empty array because I do believe this can be null in some cases. And we're going to say sort and we're going to sort it by 
um, I don't know what it's called. I think it's called like created time or something. So if you look here, it's underscore creation time. And that looks like it's a number. So we should be able to say a dot creation time minus b dot creation time. And we can use that sorted sketches down here like this. So let's, let's make sure this actually works. So if I were to submit a new one, still adding it to the end. So I think what we want to do is we just want to swap the sort. So maybe this should be B minus A. Um, I think we did forget to add a key here. So I think we should go over here to where we're doing the map. And we need to add a key to this. So I'll say key etch dot underscore ID. I'll say an angry chicken. Let's see. Cool. So, I mean, this app is looking pretty nice. We have the way to go and see all of our collections. Well, well that's pretty cool. We'll come back and I'm going to add a reset to this canvas because right now it's kind of a pain that you can't reset it. But on the collections page, we're going to probably do something very similar. Um, so let's go back. We're going to copy all this code. Let's go to our collection page. And we already have this save mutation going on. So we already have the sketches. It's just a matter of like, can we render out what we need to render out? So I'm going to paste this in. And really, we could just go ahead and copy. I think we could kind of do this. I think potentially that could be null, so let's make sure that's set. And um, yeah, let's go here. We got all of our recent sketches. Now these are going to be again in the wrong chronological order. So we want to go back to this page and probably find the sort. We can pull that into here like this. And that should be fine. Let's just do this. So it's a lot of duplicate code between the two pages. Um, but maybe what we could do on this page is just limit it by like 10 or 20 results or something. Okay, so the last thing I want to add in is like the ability to clear this canvas. So let's go back to the main page and let's find the canvas ref. And I think we could probably just add a button that says like clear. I'll just go here. I'm going to say type of button here and we're going to call this a clear button. And maybe we can give this an alt or a variant. So we have like ghosts, we have other things. Let's try, let's try ghost. That looks pretty good. Okay, so clear and submit. Clearing is supposed to call a function that's on that ref. And we're going to just go ahead and say on click. We're going to go ahead and just invoke a function here. And we're going to say canvas ref dot current dot clear canvas. Okay. So now if I were to draw something and click clear, it gets cleared out. Okay, so I think that might be as far as I'm going to take the functionality, but I do want to talk a little bit more about Convex because there's some things that I did following their philosophy of how data models should be mapped. So there's a couple more things I do want to talk about with Convex and maybe we can implement those so you guys have a better understanding of like schemas and better practices for Convex. If you go and read their schemas page, they basically say, we recommend beginning your project without a schema. And that's kind of what we just did in this whole video. It allows for rapid prototyping, and then you can add a schema once you've solidified your plan. I think our application is pretty solid. So I think we can come back and add a schema to our convex model. So what this allows us to do is we can make a schema.ts file inside this convex folder. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and copy some of this. And we only have a single table, I guess. It's called sketch. I think it's called sketches. Um, this name that you use here needs to match the name that you used here, right? So sketches is our table name. So we're going to call it sketches. And the things that we care about, what, like what are the, the pieces of data that are on that sketches record, right? We are storing the prompt and the image. I think the ID is already there by default. So we just need to store the prompt in the image. So we're going to say prompt is a string. And then we have image, which is also a string. So the reason we're adding this is, I don't know if you saw earlier, like sometimes when I was doing the IntelliSense autocorrect for like TypeScript, 
we weren't getting information about like what this stuff is that's coming back. But now if you hover over this, it knows what should exist on this data model. So when we do get sketches from the front end, okay, the sketch query knows that this is an array of some type. Before this wasn't there. Like if I were to delete, if I were to delete my schema, let's just copy this. I'm going to show you. If I delete that schema, notice that this says any or undefined, okay, which is not the best developer experience, right? So this is why at some point you probably want to add a schema dot es and make sure that. So your project knows like what properties should exist on your data models. I definitely recommend going through and read through these schemas because they do have a lot of information about like um, the things you can add as data types and stuff like that and how you could probably do joins potentially. If you go to advanced, I think it tells you how to do joins. Another thing I'll point out, which I did mention on, is that mutations run as transactionally. Okay, So I would read through this stuff. Every page here has like good information about like what these different things are. And it gets a little bit more advanced. Um, like if you don't know what a transaction is, basically a way to have a collection of writes onto your database that it's an all or nothing. So every write has to pass or else it'll just roll back and not apply those changes. Super important when you're dealing with systems that need to deal with like updating money on like a, a user's balance or you have multiple parts of your system trying to modify the same record. Transactions become super important to kind of ensure data integrity and you have consistency in your system. So another thing I didn't really do in this tutorial is argument validation. So whenever you're doing a mutation or action or query, you can actually put validation in front of this so that the data that comes in across the wire is actually validated. So we can actually add this in. It's not too hard to do. Um, let's go to any of our existing mutations. So I'm going to go to the sketches file and let's find where we do a mutation. Okay, so remember we allow the user to send in a prompt and an image and we just say that these are straight type of strings. This doesn't actually validate the data, right? So if someone sends in a number or sends in a boolean, it's not going to validate anything. Um, so what we need to do is on the mutation itself, we can add in an object here and this could be a handler like this and we could say uh, I'm going to import this V thing because that's what we'll need. But then we say args like that. Let me make sure that this is all set up. I'm going to define prompt and that's going to be a v.string. And then I'm going to say image and that's also a v.string. Okay. So now if I were to try to invoke this save sketch with some bogus data, it's going to validate before it even gets to the handler, which is nice. Um, let's go to our main page and see if we can do that. So I'm going to say save sketch mutation and figure out where do we call this. Okay, we call it down here. So let's, instead of image being an actual string, let's just pass it a number and see what happens. Okay, let's go back to, <clears throat> let's go back to our app and let's just go ahead and type some random stuff in and click submit. So we are getting some TypeScript errors. I think it's because I made this a string that isn't optional. So we have to go back and figure out how do we make stuff optional? So let's go here and let's see. Um, v optional and then you pass it this. So I'll say V optional. Because the image could potentially be undefined or null because it hasn't been created yet. And I think another thing I might have messed up on is I think it's called result, not image. So I think I'm going to change this to result. Hopefully that'll fix my TypeScript errors. Looks like it's working now. Okay, so now notice here, like if we say image false and pass it a Boolean, it's complaining because that's not what it's supposed to be. Um, if I say result false, again, that's not what it's supposed to be. So it's kind of giving us that IntelliSense. And I think we can also submit it with bad data. And we do get back an error saying that, hey, like you're passing a Boolean, but we expected a string. So that's kind of like the benefit of using the argument checking and argument validation. Kind of similar to using Zod if you've done that or TRPC where you actually like validate your arguments. So definitely useful if you have a production system, you probably want to validate everything that comes in. Um, and then also since we do have the argument validation going on, we don't even need to type these anymore because I think it'll be smart enough to know by doing inference that these things are strings. So these will also be strings. So it just makes your code a little bit cleaner and easier to manage. All right, I'm going to do a final commit. I'll just say um, showing all collections on generate. Page. 
All right, so I think that's all I kind of wanted to show you with using Convex and using the Replicate API to generate some AI images. Again, these images don't look the best. You can play around with the prompt and try to get it more descriptive. You can make better drawings to give the AI more inference as to what it should kind of draw. But overall, it's pretty cool. It's pretty simple to make this application. And I do recommend go check out Convex, play around with it a little bit. I do find it actually a really nice developer experience and it's really easy to build out completely live updating applications with very, very little work. I'm actually kind of impressed. And I might personally try to start playing around with this a little bit more outside of this, this sponsored video because I do think this is a really efficient way to build out an entire application without ever having to build your own like backend from scratch. Also, the code for this video is on this Convex Replicate repo. You can go and check it out if you want. It'll be in the description of the video. All right, so that is about all I want to show. If you do have any other comments or suggestions about this little, feel free to leave a comment below, or you can join my Discord where you can talk to me directly or just find a place to talk with other developers. I have a Discord in the description below. Uh, other than that, have a good day and happy coding.